Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I thought we would look through my naval controls and basically why I have everything set up how I do. Um, this is going to be the last video in this new updated series for the controls video because to be quite honest with you, I don't play a lot of helicopters so my helicopter controls are incredibly basic and uh, I mainly uh, rely on the multi-function menu. When it comes to the other three game modes though, I use a lot of them or I use a ton of the controls a little bit differently to some people uh, just to try and get the maximum amount out of them. When it comes to naval though, a lot of the controls are standardized because they are super simple. Um, it is pretty much as simple as that at the end of the day. Um, the naval controls are set up pretty well already from default and also at the same time if you're in a naval vehicle the bottom area tells you quite a lot of the controls that you can just use. Uh, you can move them around to try and you know make it a little bit better for yourself uh, so you know uh, if you need to change controls to kind of fit your hand uh, but generally they're not too bad um, in naval at all. So when we start off with the controls for naval we have a look at the movement stuff and I use the general things uh, for the main engine and then the naval vessel steering so uh, basically S and W and then also uh, we use A and D. So we use WASD uh, for, uh, you know, left and right and then forward and back. I also have it mapped to my arrow keys. Uh, the reason why I have it mapped to my arrow keys is because I do actually have a lot of controls on the numpad. So if I want to quickly change where I'm going in something like a PT boat or a coastal vessel and also change uh, stuff on the numpad, then that's why I have them both map to the same thing. So just means a simple move of the hand to the arrow keys instead of the west, and then we can do the numpad stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's as uh, simple as that. I think it's good to have a halt bound. Uh, the reason for this is because one of the problems with naval vessels is sometimes uh, they, especially the large ones, they take ages to actually stop um, as a vehicle and using the halt can make it a lot quicker than having to go through the stuff. So just to give you like an idea of what I mean uh, when it comes to this. So um, it's much easier uh, for a vehicle to uh, come to a stop if you completely cut off all of its power at once. So uh, if you have like a larger ship, for example, which does take a long time to be able to stop, uh, generally, what you want to do is uh, you want to just in if you if you hit w if you hit S right, which is like moving it back down to zero. You can see it takes quite a lot of time to get to that uh, because you have to go through all of the different things. Where if you just hit num zero, it goes straight full back. And what this means is it will slow it down as quick as possible. And then when it gets to zero, it will actually equal out and make sure that it brings you to a full stop. So it can kind of do it automatically for you. You don't have to worry about uh, the idea of, uh, you don't have to worry about the idea uh, of, you know, being in a bit of a pinch or anything. You can see as it gets closer to zero, it actually goes to the stop. So it's an automatic way of being able to slow yourself down as quick as you possibly can. Uh, so that's really useful if you're in certain situations, like if you're trying to like peek around a hill or if you're trying to get to a cap zone or something. Uh, so the hull is uh, really nice for that. Firing is simple. Uh, so we have LMB, um, the left mouse button as the fire. I also use RMB as the zoom uh, in general. And also at the same time, uh, we have the primary weapon, secondary weapon and anti-aircraft gun all on num one, two and three. So uh, this means that if I want to use anyone independently, I can just, you know, quick switch between them. Uh, it's very easy to do. Usually I mainly use the primary weapon, but on some vehicles I will use the secondaries as the main, main weapon. Um, just because, uh, you know, for certain, certain American vehicles, for example, they have like a 3-inch gun. And then they have a bunch of 40s on them. Well, the 3-inch gun is nowhere near as powerful as the bunch of 40s, so it's nice to use the 40s instead of it. And the key thing here, right, so this is one of the key things uh, when it comes to uh, aiming in War Thunder and also using controls uh, when it comes to 
the actual naval stuff. Ranging shot. Now that may sound really weird um, that this is one of the major controls, but I'll show you why. So I have this set to MB5, which is one of my mouse buttons. It's right next to my LMB, so it's really easy to hit, and that's you know generally what I want to go for. I have turret ranging shot off uh, because I don't actually use ranging shot for ranging, uh, and also at the same time, the main caliber um, shooting with one button, main and auxiliary caliber shooting with one button, I have turned off because I don't actually want to overheat my guns over and over and over again when it comes to auxiliary stuff. I feel like this should be a toggle option in the game, uh, linked to a control button instead of an on and off in the actual controls. If that was the case, then I would definitely do it. But since it's a toggle on and off, it's just cumbersome and it only works for certain vehicles and not others. So let's talk about the ranging shot stuff. Now, I talked about this in how to aim in naval, uh, you know, how, how to properly aim and why it's kind of important. So if we take uh, a vehicle, I don't know, uh, we can take like the Cleveland, any will do at this point, but I want to show you a little bit of a trick and you do have to turn a few things off for this. So first of all, if you're one of those people who likes having the uh the realistic aiming or well you can do the realistic aiming with it but if you have the follow uh, bullet camera you need to turn that off um always by the way have highlight projectile four point on uh this one uh, if you play arcade because it means that it tells you where your actual uh it tells you where all of your stuff will actually uh, be able to drop uh but one of the things uh that is quite important is uh, using ranging shot of a standard shot. So if you use standard shot, this is what it looks like. So it fires all of your guns at the same time. Now there's no problem with this, you know, it's, it's not like a huge issue or anything like that. What it basically means is you will end up, you know, firing everything at once. And as you can see there, uh, we actually did pretty good damage uh, with this stuff, but also at the same time, uh, now we had to w wait for the reload for the whole time. Now for something like the Cleveland, that's not too bad, right? Like it, it has a pretty good reload on these guns, uh, because it's, you know, the, the general cruisers for America, they have pretty decent reload, but for other vehicles like, um, you know, the Kern or something like that, it can take a while to reload. And if you want to swap targets mid salvo, you're not able to, and therefore all of the shots go to the same area. So once again, if you're firing here, obviously with stationary and you know you're not moving and it's really easy to hit you know the target you just have to aim at it and then you shoot all the guns but one thing that you can do uh, when it comes to a vehicle like this or any other vehicle which is large what you can do is use ranging shot and what ranging shot means is you can fire all of the guns independently from each other this means that technically mid salvo what you can do is you can actually adjust the places that you aim so it isn't going to be that some of your uh, shots miss and then some of your shots hit it will legitimately be that um, uh, that you'll be able to restructure where your shots are firing as you're going through so it just means that your hit percentages are going to be a lot higher so uh, what you want to do is you want to use ranging shots until all of your uh, shells are fired and then you want to switch to your fire main caliber weapon button which for me is lmb so you do rmb for a full round um, so you can see here that's what we're doing uh, when it comes to this and the last guns are fired now switch to lmb and then it's just going to continue that rotation uh, every time that the guns are reloaded. This means that if mid salvo you want to change where the guns are looking like this, uh, it's easier to do. And it also means that you can hit more targets in different areas. You can see where the shells are going and you can see how far I'm able to actually, you know, move them around instead of all targeting the same place, which is generally not what you want to do. Uh, with a vehicle like this and this is super useful with a ton of vehicles i highly recommend doing it it's one of the reasons why i'm able to output more damage than a lot of other people when it comes to this game mode uh, because it means you can target different areas of the ship 
at different times. So you don't have to just go after one ammo rack, you can go after several at the same time. So it's that's one of the key things when it comes to aiming in naval that is incredibly important. And I feel like undervalued um, or just underused by a lot of people. So that's something to think about. Uh, looking at the next stuff, you know, once again, turret ranging shot, don't need to use that because we use all the ranging shots. Uh, main, uh, turn that off just so you don't overheat secondary guns. And then the next ones are pretty self-explanatory. You know, you have uh, launch torpedoes, uh, depth charges, mines and mortar. So I have mines and mortar on the same one. Uh, you could swap these, but if I'm quite honest with you, I never use mortars. They're completely useless in the game. I do sometimes use depth charges, but once again, they're very much useless in the game. And I use torpedo. I use torpedoes, so therefore I put them on my space. Q is also the torpedo aiming, which is next to my WASD, so it's very easy to hit. And then also target gunner, gunner targets is next to WASD, so once again, easy to change and easy to hit. Uh, my rockets are set up to the same buttons that I have for the um, that I have in. Uh, what do you call it, uh, that I have in uh, realistic, like air. So you can set them to R, or you can set them to control, which is what I have them both set to uh, in air. Um, and also, at the same time, smoke grenades and smoke screening, once again, mirror the air stuff. Uh, sorry, the ground stuff, so it's just easier to remember these things. Uh, also, manual targeting of primary caliber, and auxiliary caliber, and anti-aircraft caliber shell. This is super useful. Um, this is really, really useful. And another, once again, very undervalued thing when it comes to a lot of people. So uh, let's get a machine which has decent secondary caliber stuff. Um, so for example, if you, are, uh, if you are worried that your AI is shooting at the wrong stuff, right? Which, you know, uh, a lot of the time it can be. Uh, what you can do is you can actually uh, set your AI to s hit certain things. So if you have those controls set up, which is, you know, uh, manual targeting uh, for these, let's say you want to shoot that cruiser with your secondaries, uh, you can just hit this button and you can see above it, it actually has that uh, uh, marker now. And then you can even set it up with the other ones. And this means that your guns uh, are going to shoot at that ship. Now, right now we have them turned off. So they're not going to shoot, and they're also out of range. But you can see, once we actually tell them to go, like they're actually going to go and attack it, since they are the secondaries are in range, but the AAs aren't. So the AAs are going to shoot whatever they want, but the secondaries are going to shoot the ship. Now let's say we want to change it. So let's put the secondaries over here, and then and then also the tertiaries over here, so the AAs. And you can see the AIs have actually swapped targets. So a lot of people talk about the fact that they don't have access or, you know, you don't generally, uh, you don't generally have uh, access to be able to uh, use these things uh, or be able to tell your AI what to do. Well, with these uh, controls, you can do. And you can see here that I now have all of my AI stuff uh, actually shooting at these while controlling the tertiary guns. So this is super cool. Um, it's... Uh, it basically means that, you know, um, it basically means that you're able to actually do this. Now, obviously, the AI is not very good at shooting unless you have them maxed out. And even then, they're pretty bad at shooting. I mean, <laughs> like, where, where is that going? <laughs> I'm not even aim, I'm not even moving. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a way of being able to if you feel like, oh, well, you know, my my guns are not shooting where I want them to. Well, you can, you can set them up so they do shoot where you want them to. So you can target certain aircraft or you can target certain ships and do it like that. So that, that's a really useful control. I usually use it um, to target uh, planes coming in um, and make sure that my guns are aiming at the things that they're supposed to. Next shell type, I don't have uh, put on, uh, basically because I just use the standard buttons for this. Um, so uh, I, I, there's no reason for me to use this uh, because uh, I quick switch anyway, just using the one, two, threes. Uh, then camera control. So you have target tracking and target pointing. I don't like either of these. 
uh, because uh, as we've talked about before, when it comes to ground and aviation, I like having a free cam. I like having it moved around. I like uh, being able to, you know, see what's going on. I don't like when targeting something, if I zoom in, it follows that target because it means that I can't see everything else. So I deselect these uh, to make it easier for me to, you know, not see these things. Also some basic uh, radar controls. So on off, change radar scope scale and also select um, select radar target to lock onto. But then also we have MMB. Uh, MMB I have set to select a target, but also lock on to a target. So basically the same as ground once again, uh, just two uh, or one button which does two things. So you can lock on to a target while also um, selecting it. So it means that you're, it means that it's just easier to deal with. There's not a ton of radars which do have lock on in this game. Um, but generally, they can be quite useful to be able to uh, to be able to go after enemies. Maybe if you want a bit more camera control, it might be worth changing this to a different button to your uh, lock on. But for me, uh, it's it's not too much of an issue. I think uh, if I'm usually radar uh, locking something. I generally want to shoot it so uh, that's how it kind of goes don't have any of this stuff assigned uh, because why well, i don't need to uh, this stuff you can do in the multi-function menu which is very useful don't want to invert anything and then also the aiming stuff uh, for this once again is uh, controlled by the distance correction uh, that you have on the mouse wheel so that is how uh, you generally you know uh, you generally can move this stuff obviously this is only with realistic aiming with arcade aiming um, you don't have to uh, actually distance correct it will do it for you but one of the things that you will have to do to distance correct is to make uh is to make what's the word uh is to um is to try and guess where the enemy is going when it comes to the distance that they're going to cover while the shells are in the air so if somebody is coming towards you for example so the distance is getting shorter what you want to do is you want to aim in front of them uh if somebody is uh going away from you then you want to aim behind them. Uh, so I'll kind of show what I mean by this. But as I said, I play arcade, but I do have the realistic control set up if I need them. Generally, I don't use them though, because I like to relax. Um, if I'm playing super seriously, I'll use them and I'll use the mouse wheel for the distance sight control. So let's say this Anton Schmidt is coming towards me, uh, even if it's uh, very shallowly, I'll aim here uh, because then, uh, once the uh, once the destroyer is coming, it will run into these shells, right? Because these shells will land in front of it, and therefore, as the destroyer pushes forward, it will eventually run into the shells. And then, once again, if it's going away, we'll aim over it like this. Even with the arcade controls, because you can do distance correction with arcade controls, uh, you just have to do it manually instead of with a button. And you can see that we can fire over or under the machine, which will, if, if the machine is going away from you and you fire over, you will shoot into it as it goes into it. If you fire under and it's coming towards you, it will run into it. So that's basically how this works. By the way, the sequential fire thing on uh, the Atlanta and stuff like that is really cool. And uh, what can actually happen is uh, you don't you have too many guns so you can't fully sequential fire but you can kind of half it <laughs> which is pretty interesting but yeah um that that's certainly something that's kind of unique to the atlanta because it has so many guns on it the porters do it kind of too but yeah so that that's how you kind of aim uh when it comes to arcade stuff and then uh, uh and this distance correction thing is only useful for realistic aiming so if you are a person who only uses um you only use arcade aiming maybe it might be worth you know p putting it on something else uh, here for me i just have it here just because I, all the other functions that I use are already mapped out. So you have the type of shells uh, mapped out, also artillery strike and extinguish fire. Uh, repair is on F, um, just because I want it the same as the ground forces. Uh, repair breaches is on B, uh, because this makes you float again. Uh, you can actually set these to automatic if you want. I would advise not to, um, basically because if you set them to automatic, Generally, uh, if all of them get popped at once, like let's say you get set on fire, then you have to repair, then you're gonna, and then you're also sinking, uh, they'll all take a ton of time to be able to fix instead of if you do them individually. 
So what you usually want to do is you want to put fires out. Um, well, sorry, uh, you want to, if your buoyancy is getting really bad, you want to repair your breaches first. Uh, if, uh, if that's not too bad, then you want to put the fires out first and then you want to repair. So repair always comes last uh, when it comes to those things, uh, basically because of the fact that if you repair while on fire, the fire will keep causing things to break. So your repair time will just keep increasing over and over and over again. Uh, so yeah, simple as really. Then towing cable uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's once again in that little bottom menu that they have. Makes it very easy to uh, look at, very easy to deal with. I don't have any of this stuff um, assigned because as I said, I use the aiming method I showed before and also have it assigned to my mouse wheel. So it doesn't really matter too much. Then also surveillance aircraft is uh, launched on you and also the Alt-U. Uh, uses the catapult deactivation uh, and I think it's alt G to do the smoke screen uh, I can't actually remember though one of these one of these machines has a has a hydroplane yeah it's this one uh, the good old Trenton but um, overall it's I really like the hydroplane mechanic by the way I think it's super cool uh, so I hope they Gunners continue with stuff like that but you can see it's you to uh, you to use let's just turn off my guns Gunners real quick uh, it's you to use for me, and um, there we go, and let's set it off, and then it's Alt-G to use the smoke screen, like this, and once again, all those controls are kind of shown, so you can see them, and they've definitely made the smoke screen a hell of a lot bigger now than before, but it also lasts for a lot shorter time, so it's a, a thick boy, but it is not a long boy, uh, which is... Incredibly sad. But yeah, th those are the basic controls for the hydroplane. I haven't screwed with them too much. Uh, I might want to change Alt G to something else. Generally, I don't like using Alt for button uh, or Alt U. Sorry, I don't like using Alt and a button um, because, um, as we talked about before, small hands. So being able to uh, reach across like the keyboard to stuff kind of sucks. Uh, so I might want to change that to something like O or things like that, or uh, you know. Uh, K is usually not used, so it'll be easier to deal with, and everything else uh, kind of, you know, fits how it goes. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty much my naval controls. Um, uh, I think uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's nothing too crazy there. And when it comes to the uh, naval battle settings, you know, depth charge time, you can obviously say it's set to whatever you want. Shooting without alignment, uh, so, you know, this means that they will just generally just shoot anyway. Save the type of AI firing modes, and obviously, you know, you can set this to whatever you want. You can change this on the fly. Automatic torpedo forestall enabled, which is good. And then highlight projectiles four point. If you use arcade, you have to turn this on. It makes shooting large caliber guns at distance so much easier and also being able to correct so much easier. Highlight targeting points as well. Obviously, you want this on as well. Play buzzes sound when projectile hits the water. I don't need random extra sounds, especially since naval is already really loud. Automatic target lock, I don't want at all uh, because I will just target lock myself. Obviously, if some people struggle with this, you want to turn this on. Realistic aiming, if you want to be slightly more precise, but it's not required when it comes to arcade, as long as you have semi-decent crews. Follow bullet camera, screws up the ranging. Does look cool, I suppose, but it screws up the ranging and also means that you are limited when it comes to looking around the place. So it's a no from me. Uh, it takes away from me being able to aim properly. So that is all of the controls uh, that I use for naval. Um, some of it's self-explanatory, some of it's a little bit complicated, but overall it's probably the more basic of the three, but it works for me. It's as simple as that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman675, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Jerry Prevolt, Mega Dino King, Orange Tail, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Uncle Bean, Sem Arslan, Derek R., Bereen, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.